Hello and welcome to another live English class. I'm Christian and this is Kangaroo English. As you can see, I am wearing some of the fantastic new Kangaroo English merchandise. This is a kangaroo hoodie. It's great quality, really good. Um, and if you want to buy uh, any of my merchandise, my clothing, then check out the link down in the description box. Um, this class is made possible by people like you who uh, support me on Patreon, who sponsor me on Patreon and who buy clothing and also people who send me beautiful comments every day. Um, you know, I, I, I read all of your comments. Your comments make me so happy and so um, just just uh, grateful that that I am um, that I have so much love from all of you. Um, yeah, and and I would love to see you in the Facebook group or on my Instagram. Um, yeah, everyone. Yeah, the hoodie's awesome, right? It's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so hello to, um, hello to all of you. Um, uh, we have uh, Kadra, uh, Alam, uh, Kadra Yus, uh, no, Khad Khadra Yusuf, uh, Alam Khir Hossein, Felipe Jose, um, Uvgun, Uf Uvgun Turkan, Aline is here, uh, Gosha, Ushantha, Amarasing, Amarasinghe, <laughs> Um, Dimitrio Senenenko, Mahmoud Albala. Um, um, what else? Um, Ryan Nayeri, Remo Mattioli, Christina Ruibial, uh, Jash uh, Jatsik, Jatsik Borish, <laughs> Patricia's here, uh, Gleason Santos, Josema, um, Lenny's here. Uh, too many people. I, I can't say all of your names, but thank you for, for being here. Um, last week, my wife was sick. She was sick all week from, from, from Sunday to Sunday. And as a result, last week, last week I only made two videos. It was, it was very frustrating week, but this week, I'm, I'm really excited because two of the videos that I have to release this week, I'm, I'm really, are, are things that I'm really passionate about. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to share my videos this week uh, with you. Um, but first I wanted to start with this, okay? So this is, last, last Wednesday I... I made a video about articles, about a and the and no article. And I wanted to explain a little bit more about the difference between these three, these three sentences, okay? So here, I go to a school, okay? So we know, we know that it's a singular school, a school, we know it's singular, and we know that it's not specific, not a specific school. A school could be a school here in Spain, where I am. It could be a school in Australia, my, my hometown. It could be a school in England or Germany. It's, it's not a specific school, it's a school. Now what about this? I go to the school. This is a specific definite school. Now if I say to you, I go to the school, then it means that you know the school. You and I, we know the school because I'm specifying a specific school. The school. Okay? And 
because it's singular, it's it's definite. Okay, it's a it's a, a singular thing. I go to the school. What about this? The final one. I go to school. No, no article. This means that it is something uncountable. It's something that is abstract. It's something in general. So, for example, in, in my class, I explained about love. Love is something that we can't count. You can't say one love and two loves and no, it's, it's um, something um, ephemeral in the universe, right? Uh, the same with hate and peace and war and school. So a school, a school and the school, they are a place. Okay, a place, a, a specific or not specific place. But school is also a concept. School is an idea. It's the idea of being in a place with students and being educated. So the difference is I go to school basically is a synonym for I get educated or I get taught or I am learning so that's the difference between between all of these um, bye Gosha have, have a great day <laughs> uh, so <laughs> um, uh, hello to to Laura in Sydney um, and Eduardo in Brazil um, so Prashant says that he hates going to school. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Prashant. Um, honestly, when when I went to, to high school, I didn't I didn't enjoy it. Um, I didn't enjoy the classrooms. I didn't enjoy the style of teaching. I didn't enjoy um, anything about school, <laughs> really. So. I understand what you're saying, um, and you know maybe that's that's one of the reasons that I'm very passionate about changing the way that we teach people because I think a majority of students don't have a good experience in the classroom. You know they're not learning in a productive way, like. I didn't learn any anything, you know, important at school in high school. No, the learning style, the teaching style was bad. Uh, so yeah, so I'm um, for 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 those of you who are asking, I am from Perth in Australia, but now I live and work in Spain, in Galicia, in the north of Spain. And it's very, very cold. It's snowing outside right now. It's horrible. Okay, so uh, anyway, I hope that this explains this better, okay, for you. Right. Um, so. Now it's time for you to appreciate my artistic skills once again because I'm going to do some drawing for you, because we are going to learn some idioms. Oops. Ay, ay, ay. I can't look at this. It's like an alien language. <laughs> so idioms are fixed phrases or fixed expressions that are very, very common in English. English is a very idiomatic language. So let's learn some, some new idioms. Um, uh, first, before we start, I want to say um, uh, hello to Sajiv, who is in hospital right now. Um, 
I'm sorry to hear that you, you're in hospital. I wish you a speedy recovery. Get well soon. Okay, there are two things that you can say to people. I wish you a speedy recovery and I hope that you get well soon. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to pray for you, but I'm sure that there are lots of people here who will. Um, um, and I'm sure, I hope that you have good doctors and good medical care. Um, uh, okay, um, so let's start to learn about some idioms. Now, all of these idioms are related to animals. So I'll draw the animal and then we'll talk about the idiom. Okay, so the first animal is this. Okay, so what's the animal? Who knows what the animal is? <laughs> Hello, Gerson. Good to have you in here. Um, yes, it looks like a mouse, but it's the big, okay, the big angry mouse, which is the rat. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, in, in, in all languages, in human experience, different animals have different, you know, different characteristics. So, who can tell me some adjectives to describe a rat? Okay, what are, what are the characteristics of a rat in, in your point of view? Okay, they're filthy. Okay, filthy. They're fast. Okay, they're very, they're very fast. They're dirty. Okay. That's great. Uh, they're noisy, disgusting, cunning. Wow. This... This word, cunning, what a great adjective. Well done. Uh, sly and treacherous. Wow, you, you guys have some incredible vocabulary. <laughs> Felipe Jose says that they are delicious. <laughs> do, do, do you eat rats? Oh my God. Well, maybe, you know, you put a skewer in the rat on the barbecue? Wow, well, wow. Well, I've never tried, but why not? You know, why not? Um, mm. Okay, so these, these adjectives are great. Cunning and sly, okay? And these adjectives and all of the other negative adjectives give us this idiom, okay? So the idiom is to smell a rat. You smell a rat. Now, it doesn't mean to smell literally. It's a metaphor. Okay? So imagine that you are on the street. You're on the street and a person comes to you and says, um, Hello, um, here I have... Um, an iPhone, an iPhone X, an iPhone 10. Okay, this iPhone, this iPhone is in perfect condition, but I, I need, I need to sell this, this iPhone. I will sell you this iPhone for 10 euros. <laughs> and you say, you say, hmm, an iPhone 10 for 10 euros? I smell a rat, okay? You smell something cunning or sly. You smell something which is not right, something dirty, something wrong. And, you know, 
again, if, you know, a rat is a synonym for a person who, who, um, who, who is an informant for the police, okay? Imagine if um, you, you, you are in the mafia, you're in the mafia, but also secretly you are working for the police. You are a rat. And so all of this negative, you know, connotations, the negative ideas, you know, help you to smell a rat, right? Filthy fasted. So, very good, guys. Very good. Now, um, we need, we need to, to practice, okay, to make a sentence. So, um, I'm going to write a word on the board, okay? Um... This one. Okay, so the word is sand. Sand like sand on the beach or sand in the desert. So I want you to invent a sentence, create a sentence with sand and smell a rat. Go. I'm I'm waiting to hear your beautiful sentences. Okay. Stanislav. Stanislav. Stanislav Vil, Vilch, Vilchik. Vilch. <laughs> Says that um, the rat is a dirty animal, but very intelligent. It's very true. Uh, Feo says, I smell a rat in the sand. Mencha says, in Colombia, the politicians smell... A rat. Well, so the politicians don't smell a rat, so you smell a rat in politics, right? They are the rats. You smell the, the rats, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, Suraj says, I smell a rat in the sand. <laughs> Rodrigo, Rodrigo says, um, I'm going to eat my rat sandwich. <laughs> what? I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that so many of you are eating rats. <laughs> um, okay, we have a great one here from Guilherme who says, Are you trying to sell me some beach sand? I smell a rat. Fantastic. Felipe Jose says, Hey, that's sand on the ground. I smell a rat. Very good. Perfect. Okay, let's do another one. Now, remember, I'm not an artist, okay? <laughs> This, this is, this, yes! Thank you, V Stone. Thank you very much. And Irwin as well. Okay, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not a big rat. <laughs> or a hyena. Or, um, no, it's none of this. Um, it is. It is. It's not a, oh my god. No, it's not a fox or a wolf <laughs> or a dingo. No, it's a horse. horse it was. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm a bad artist. Okay, so horse. Now, remember that idioms, you know, language reflects a human experience, right? So, um, when we talk about horses, what do you, what do you think when, when we talk about horses? Like, what people do you think of? What activities do you think of? So, not, not adjectives, but people and activities. Okay? 
Um, okay, think about traveling, good. Okay, you think about riding. Nice, okay. Uh, cowboys, there it is. Horse racing, ah, okay. Cowboys. Um, <laughs> ooh, competitions. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, power horse, horse power. Polo, betting. Ooh. Gambling. Very nice. Okay, so um, my my grandmother, she was Irish, and the Irish love horses and they love to gamble and to bet on horses, right? And then she moved to Australia and Australians spend more on gambling than any other people on the planet. Australians are the biggest gamblers in the world. So imagine my grandmother's Irish, she has a gambling genetics, gambling DNA, and then she goes to Australia. So it was a, the, perfect, the perfect storm. So my grandma spent a lot of time. She spent every day watching the horse races, going to the, 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 the betting shop. Um, it was her, her favorite activity. But she, she always made very small bets, one dollar, two dollars. Um, yeah, this was her, um, her, her, her thing. <laughs> um, now, when, when you're riding a horse, okay, when you're riding a horse, you can, okay, you can, you can do this, okay, to make the horse go. Okay, to make the horse go. Or, you can do this, okay, you pull to make the horse stop. Okay, now, there are two words for this, when you stop your horses, okay? So, The first thing we say is that hold your horses, not pull or tug or, or, or anything like this. We say hold, hold your horses, hold. And so hold your horses means stop. Okay, so um, imagine that you are, you are a little, a little child, okay, a little child and your mum your mum goes out. She goes out to the supermarket. And when your mum is at the supermarket, you accidentally break the television. Oh no, you broke the television. And soon your mum will come home and see the television broken. Now, you have to explain what happened. Now, what happened was you were playing football. You're playing football and the football hit the television and the television fell down and... Okay. So, you, your mum comes home and she, she looks at the television and says, Oh my God, what happened? What did you do to the television? And, and you, you say to your mum, Mum, I'm really sorry, but I was playing football and then the television fell. And your mum says, whoa, 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 hold your horses. You were playing football in the house? Hold your horses. It means stop. 
Stop right now. And of course, the other thing to say is, whoa, whoa. Which has a similar meaning, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, the horses, whoa, 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 whoa. You were playing football in the house, I kill you. <laughs> uh, yes, and in Spanish, um, para el carro. Yes, yes. Um, or just, you know. <laughs> okay. I hope that you understood my description. Okay, next one is... Ooh, I like this one. Okay, there's a bottle of vodka. Authentic Russian vodka. There's the vodka and the fish. Um, does anybody have any idea what maybe this idiom is? I think you can, you can maybe, uh, fish is in there you go, now it has a mouth, and gills. These, these are called gills. Ooh, very nice. Uh, message in a bottle? No. But great guess, Francesco. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. 1953 emo. Yes. To drink like a fish. To drink like a fish. Which, you know, I think it's self-explanatory. If you drink a lot, you drink like a fish. And maybe you drink a lot of vodka. Did you know that vodka comes from the Russian word voda, which means water? It means water. So vodka is alcoholic water in Russia. Spasiba. Spasiba to all my Russian friends. And another drink, whiskey, right? Whiskey. Whiskey comes from the Scottish Gaelic language and it means the water of life. So vodka is water and whiskey is also water. So. <laughs> this is evidence of two things, right? It's evidence that Scottish people and Russian people have a problem with, with drinking. Or it's evidence that, that whiskey and vodka are very healthy. They're good for you. Um, okay, it's a, a great question here from Feo. Is it... Uh, whiskey or whiskey with a with an E. Okay, well, um, technically, if you have whiskey with the with the E, then that is the protected name that should only be used with the authentic original Scottish drink. But the other one is for the, the drink in general. That's what I read on the internet. Now, I'm not sure if it's true. And I don't know if it's actually... Um, I don't know if it's actually um, protected with the E or without the E. Uh, I need to Google. I need to Google. Or you can Google for me and tell me. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, the next one. Uh, wow, okay. Uh, 
Um, if you drink a lot of whiskey, does it mean that you're an alcoholic? No, because whiskey is just water. So if you, <laughs> if you drink a lot of whiskey, you're just, you're, you're healthy. You're, you're, an, you're an athlete, an Olympic athlete. <laughs> yes, yes, Erwin, it is a big pig. It's not a teddy bear or a panda or <laughs> a panda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Peppa Pig. It's a pig. Okay. Now, now I have a question for you, right? What makes the pig very, very happy? What, what makes the pig happy? Tell me. And this is the idiom. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It needs Big legs for the jamon serrano. Yes, look. Yeah, like this, maybe. Oh, there we go. Look at the beautiful. This is the jamon serrano. Yeah. I love jamon serrano. Okay. Very good. Mud. Mud. Mud, yes. Mud makes the pig happy. But Ovgun Turkan has, has definitely... He's nailed it. He's, he's exactly... Okay. So, mud is, mud is a combination of, well, not sand, but soil, earth, and water. And it creates mud. And Peppa Pig, she loves to jump, to jump in the mud, right? But in, in the country, in the country, mud is a combination of soil and water and also poo. Because the, um, the pig is pooing. <laughs> it, you know, it, it doesn't have toilets, right? So, mud and poo, they make the pig happy, okay? <laughs> So, <laughs> Mayella says that um, um, soil and whiskey makes the pig happy. It's, it's true. It's true. Um, ah, so Grit, Grit Kosh says the name is not protected. Okay. They're variants. Okay. So, the idiom is this. So, you can say, um, a pig in mud or a pig in poo. And it means someone who's very, very happy. So, for me, imagine that it's, you know, it's, it's Saturday. I've had a great week at work, teaching. I've uploaded lots of videos to YouTube. And I'm sitting on the sofa with a glass of whiskey and I'm drinking. I am a pig in mud or I am a pig in poo. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm in my happy place. Yeah. This is, this is the, the idiom, right? Uh, in New Zealand, they call soil or earth dirt. Is it common in England too? Yeah, I think these three, they're, they're very similar, but different, different psychological, you know, ideas. Like, soil is rich in nutrients, right? Soil is rich in nutrients. Soil is for growing plants and vegetables. It's sometimes you go and you buy soil. It's, it's a beautiful thing, right? And then we have earth. Earth would be used more when we talk about like large quantities. You know, if you, are, if you are building a house, 
you need to move a lot of Earth. Okay? So like the planet Earth is very big and Earth is like a, like a big quantity and it could be anything. Earth could be clay or rock or, you know, it's like, it's like the, the material of the planet. And then we have, um, what did you say? Dirt. And dirt, you know, dirt, it's the same all of these are the same substance, but dirt is negative, right? It's like, don't, don't bring dirt into my house on your shoes. It's soil, it's earth, but it's dirt. It's, so it's, a men, it's a psychologically a little bit different, right? That's what I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, ground. Ground describes the surface that we, we walk on. It describes a surface. So ground could be grass or concrete or bitumen or soil. It describes uh, uh, the surface, okay? And then land. Land describes uh, a clearly defined section of, of earth, of soil, of dirt, of ground. It's something with a perimeter. So before you build a house, you buy land. You buy land. It's, it's, it, it describes the the plot, the parcela, the parcel of land. In a lot of European languages, they call them parcels, which I think is really nice, parcels. And well, territory. I think territory is, is always bigger, okay? It's, it's a bigger, like, uh, a bigger scale and it also is more abstract right like a dog has territory you know where where the dog likes to go and doesn't go it's the territory of the dog but it doesn't have maybe clear boundaries um, and normally territory is contested right this person wants the territory and this person wants the territory and you're fighting and, you know, it's, it, it, it gives the idea of conflict, I think. Man, and then area, region, property. We could talk about this all day. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think you can just say, um, let me give you some 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 special words, okay? Now, imagine if you don't know what something is called. Now, if you are learning English, you, you don't know what something is called. Like, what's the name of this? Mm, I don't know. Now, if it's plural, you can say stuff. So imagine, um, I see this, look at this. There's multiple things, there's plural things. You say, look at this stuff. It's a bit like things, okay, things. But it's more, it's more informal stuff. Look at all this stuff. Look at this stuff. Clean up, clean up your stuff. <laughs> or, or, or if you have an argument with your wife, pack up your stuff and get out. <laughs> For example, <laughs> I, I want all of your stuff out of my house in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, stuff. And, and if it's singular, if it's singular, 
you could say thingy. Like this with a Y. Thingy. The, the, the thingy. Give me the, the, the thingy. The, the, the thingy. It's, it's a, a special noun, right? And if you want to really get fancy, yeah, if you want to really expand your vocabulary, you can say thingamajig. Thingamajig. Honestly, I'm not sure about the spelling of this word. Something like this. Thingamajig. G -g -g. It's not magic, like woohoo magic. Thingamajig. Give me the thingamajig. Like in Spanish they say chisme. Give me the chisme. Chisme. Dame, la... <laughs> Dame el chisme. The, the thingamajig. Um, what's another one? Uh, or, or you could say the thingamabob. Give me the thingamabob. These are just um, strange words that we have in English to when we don't know the name of something. Um, and I'm sure that there are more, but my brain is... My memory's bad. Um, uh, okay, so... Um, there's a, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to draw one more animal and then, and then I'll answer some questions. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. This, this is the final animal. Okay. Um, um okay. I think this will be my finest creation yet. My this 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 has a better Hamon Serrano than the pig. It's, um, it is a cat. Yes. <laughs> it's not an alligator or a crocodile. Or <laughs> it's, um, oh, um, just hang on one minute. Oh, this, oh, oh, God. Hang on, I think someone is here. Hello. Hello there. I have to, Hello. I have to sign for a package. Hello, do you, do you, do you speak English? You knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. This is um, YouTube. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> do His I, name? Uh, my name is Christian. Christian? Uh -huh. With, with H. Are you sure? Ah, Conache. Ah, si, si. No problems. Uh, Saunders. Christy. Mm -hmm. uh, Saunders. Sí. S A U. A U. N D. Uh -huh. E R. Uh -huh. S. Perfect. Y ahora D N I. A Y. Correcto. Uno cuatro cuatro. <laughs> Uh, siete, cero cero tres, H, cero cero tres, H, sí. Internacional. <laughs> My name, Pepe Luis. <laughs> Pepe Luis. José Luis. José Luis. Oh, hello, José Luis. <laughs> Spain. <laughs> now, now I have to sign the little, hang on, let me just sign the, uh, sí, sí. wait, my finger, yeah? Sí. Ah, oh, perfect. Please, please don't go. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> wow. He was a cool he was a cool postman. Um this this is 
an electric blanket for my mum. <laughs> because um, if there's one thing my mum hates, it's a cold bed. So I bought her an electric blanket. <laughs> okay, um, let's let's uh, let's let's get back to it. let's <clears throat> let's let's get back to the serious um, business of. Um, okay, here we go. Serious business of learning English. Uh, oh, this is too far away from my beautiful cat. Okay, right, uh, cat, right, cat. Where's my um? I, le I left my chalk, oh man. Okay. So, um, now I don't know if you have the same expressions in, in your language because I know that in different languages the cat, the cat is, has different characteristics. So tell me, what are the characteristics of a cat in your country? Tell me. Oh, it's very strange to write with the thing. Wow. Uh, okay, lazy. Lazy. Ah, uh, seven lives, okay. Lazy, seven lives. Sleepy, cute, crazy, okay. Cute, crazy, smart. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Smart, independent, innocent. Wow, okay. Independent, elegant, mysterious. But it's interesting that a majority of you are saying that cats are lazy. Rodrigo says his girlfriend is a cat. <laughs> um, well, selfish, uh huh, selfish, greedy. Wow, so I think some negative, vicious. Wow, so definitely some negative and some positive. Wow, okay. Well, um, in English, cats have nine lives. Not seven or five or they have nine, which I know is different in, in other countries. But what is the one thing that can kill the cat? Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> okay, so in English we say that curiosity killed the cat. It's a type of warning. It's a piece of advice to say, don't, you know, don't ask too many questions. Don't try to discover this information. No te metes. <laughs> okay, so it's like, um, imagine if you, you see, you see some people on the street and they are, you know, they're talking like, you know, maybe they're, they're, you know, they're like this, right? They're, you know, and they're talking and, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're giving, they're, they're passing money, right? They're passing money and you think, hmm, this is, this is suspicious. Suspicious. I'm, I'm going to go and... And talk to them. Mm -mm -mm. The curiosity, the curiosity killed the cat. Or well, it's very nice, actually, Feo. You could say, you look fishy. <laughs> yes, if um, if uh, if if somebody looks a bit suspicious, you can say they look fishy. Very nice. Uh, aha. In Spain, they say um. Buscarle tres pies al gato, yeah. Don't try to see evidences where they are not actually true. Yeah, in English we would say, um, 
don't, uh, don't. I can't think. I told you I have a bad memory. A bad memory. Um, well, um, does anybody have any quick questions before I go? Because very soon I have to go. So yes, please tell me um, if you have any quick questions for me to answer. <sighs> okay, Emmanuel Rossi wants to know, how do you say might as well? Okay, now, if you analyze this, then <laughs> it makes no sense because might is like probability, right? Like 50-50. I might do this, I might do this, I'm not sure, 50 And as well means like also or in addition. So might as well as like maybe in it like if you analyze the individual words it makes no sense but forget this don't don't try to analyze just just look at this and it means basically we we should it means that it is a good idea to do this. Like, um, a good idea to, um, okay, imagine, imagine that it's raining, okay, it's raining outside. Now, the rain is on and off, right? So, it's raining for 10 minutes and then it stops. And then it rains again, and so you are, you're talking with your friend, and you say, um, should we take the umbrellas? Should we take them or not? Because maybe it will rain, maybe it won't rain. It's raining cats and dogs, right? And, um, and your friend says, well, well we we might as well take the umbrellas. It means we should take the umbrellas. But with one little difference, a little difference, okay? It, it gives the idea that there are no other options, right? It's like, this is the final option. Well, we might as well take the umbrellas, like, why not? Why not? Because there's no other possibilities. We don't have raincoats. We don't have a protective bubble. We should, because there's no other options. We may as well, might as well, okay? So it's strange. It, it's, it's, it means that something is a good idea because there's no other options. Um, can you marry him or might as well jump off a bridge? Um, you can, well, if you say, for example, you might as well jump off a bridge, it means that you, you should jump off a bridge because there's no other options, right? Basically, um, okay. Um, uh, one question here from Junior Farias, which is about the difference between by far and so far. Okay, okay, so the first one is so far. So far means until now.
So from the past until now. So you could say, so far my job is fantastic. Or I, I love my job so far. I love my job until now. Until now my, my job is perfect. But by far is totally different. By far means um, um, uh, by uh, big difference. Well, we can substitute by, we can say with, with a big difference. Because re remember that far is a big distance, right? Far. So by far means, for example, um, this costs 10 euros. This costs 5,000 euros. This is the most expensive by far, with a big difference, a big difference in price. Or as, um, as Amir Asmi said, he is by far my biggest enemy. Very good, very good. Um, okay, guys, I'm sorry, but I have to go. It was an absolute pleasure teaching you today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this class. Um, don't forget to buy some kangaroo English merchandise. Look, look how incredible it is. It's so cool. <laughs> um, also, I'd, I'd love to see you on Facebook or Instagram. Um, uh, and yeah, thank you very much to all of you. Tomorrow there will be a new class from me about something that I'm really, really passionate about. Um, lots of love to you all. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. Bye. <laughs>